Peter Levels just built an app that's making over 70K a month entirely with AI. But the crazy part is it just took him three hours to make the initial product. Now I'm gonna walk you through the five key strategies that he used and how you can implement them yourself. And this isn't just about building apps. You can use these exact strategies to launch any product faster and to be more efficient in your day to day. And although Levels is internet famous, there's others with no audience who are using this exact strategy successfully. And many of the strategies we discuss, I used to build my first agency that made over 50K a month. Now, before we get into these five strategies, who exactly is Peter Levels? And what exactly did he build that only initially Initially took him three hours to build and is currently making 70k a month. Peter is an internet famous indie hacker who initially went viral when he started 12 businesses in 12 months. This was back in 2014 and in 2021 he stated that 5% of his startups have actually been successful. And I'll dive into why this is important later on in the video but he currently has over six products that are making 10k a month. But most recently he has gone viral, gotten retweets from Elon Musk and has taken the entire Twitter space by storm with his project that he describes as a fun free-to-play MMO flight sim, which was made 100% with AI and is free to play. This game has gotten about 100 million impressions and is currently making 70k a month through in-game advertisements. Literally, there's ads like on the blimps when you're flying around. It's pretty epic. On the surface, it's a pretty simple game and visually it looks a lot like RuneScape. Uh, brings me back to when I loved playing that. But the strategies he used to build this can be leveraged by anyone and it has to be studied. And the best part is that he tweets and documents everything, so it's pretty easy to study, and I did that for you. Okay, the first strategy the Levels used is he created a prototype as quick as possible. The first thing Peter did was he used AI to create a prototype in hours. Like, his initial prototype legit took him three hours. And so why is getting something out the door so important? Here's Brian Armstrong, the CEO of Coinbase, talking about the best way to get insight into your product. If you're pre-product market fit, the best advice that I have from that period is action produces information. So just, just like keep doing stuff. Action produces information. The quicker you act, the quicker you get information. And with that information, you can iterate or move on. And this is key because Levels didn't just get lucky by launching this flight simulator. As mentioned, he has a 5% historical hit rate. And so if you're only gonna hit on 5% of your products, you have to be able to prototype and bring things to market quickly. So here's my challenge. If you have an idea, find the quickest way to test it, okay? But how can you actually do this? In this case, Levels build a prototype by what a lot of people are calling vibe coding. This is a process where you embrace AI and it writes about 95% of the code. It's a shift from writing the code yourself to writing the prompts that lets the AI write the code. If you're technical, you can use the same approach that Peter Levels used, which was use cursor. And then by typing in a simple prompt and tweaking the code, he was able to build the initial product. According to his Twitter, he literally asked it, make a 3D flying game in browser with skyscrapers. And that's it. I've used this tool before. I use it to build my 14 day challenge app, but it does require some technical skills. Now, if you're not technical and you still want to vibe code, there's tools like Replit out there that allow you to just type in what you want and it'll build the app for you. I recently used this tool to build a website that showed my content creation history, similar to a GitHub code commit history. Now, the key with this vibe coding is getting a product out the door quickly. But this concept isn't limited to the app space. You can use pre-existing tools paired with AI to prototype on ideas rapidly. This includes anything from a digital product to a physical product. Everything from the website copy to the product images to the pricing. This can all be streamlined in today's world. And if you'd like a video where I deep dive into launching like a digital product with AI, let me know in the comments. But some products to look at are Gumroad Card, Unbound. And if you're launching a physical product, I am a sucker for just using Shopify and their templated websites. Okay, so that's the first strategy, which is getting the prototype out the door. So what is the second strategy? Okay, the second strategy he used is he got people using it and he listened. And Levels does this better than almost anyone. This allows him to get feedback as soon as possible. Do people like it? And if they don't like it, why don't they like it? Frankly, Levels is one of the best people in this space about getting eyeballs on his product. And he uses this one strategy. It's called building in public or what Alex Lieberman, the founder of Morning Brew is calling it, vibe marketing. This is the process of documenting your journey so that anybody can follow along. But why is this so valuable? Because you're bringing the audience along for a ride. They feel engaged along the entire journey, and as a result, you're much more likely to succeed. And to be honest, as AI becomes more and more prominent, the product itself is no longer a moat. The distribution is. And having human connection and a story behind the product is what will make the difference. Made by humans versus made by robots. People want to use products that were made by people, even if a robot actually built it. Unfortunately, a lot of people 
people get this build in public thing entirely wrong, and this is what makes Level so special. First, he posts what most people are afraid of, like financial numbers or success metrics that are normally kept private. But in fact, a lot of those private things are actually the best things to share because that's what people are most interested in. You can go to his Twitter and see this in real time, but each step along the way, he's tweeting his journey. He has tweets about how much money he's made. He links out to an analytics dashboard where you can see real-time users. In fact, he isn't even hiding things like where are people coming from. And there's one interesting one, somethinghub.com. What are people doing before flying these things? Anyway, so he's a master at getting people to pay attention and follow along. He actually listens to his audience. Going back to the Brian Armstrong point about information, information is only valuable if you use it. If you don't use it, it's useless. What Levels does is he hears people, he listens, and then he builds accordingly. Recently, his audience wanted live chat, so he implemented live chat. There's countless examples of this, and I'm going to be going through them in a little bit. But how can you build in public? It's ultimately just about documenting your process publicly. What you think is obvious probably isn't to other people. A great way to do this is create forcing functions like committing to posting once a week about what you did this week. If you look at Level's tweets, he literally will just tweet the change log about what features he's pushed. And now as you document, don't be afraid to ask people for help. This is something Levels does very well, and you're amazed at how much people care to help. Recently, he asked, any idea why this happens? And somebody tweeted the exact solution, and Levels implemented it. And I know exactly what you're thinking. Levels has an existing audience. I don't have that. Sure, it does not hurt to have a Twitter following of over 600,000 people. But that just illustrates the fact of how important it is to build an audience, which is something that won't change in the future. But what if you currently don't have an audience? So there's three things. First is you probably do have some sort of audience. My guess is if you were to post a poll on Instagram, at least 100 people would see it. That's a pretty big room of people. And even if you have one user, you can learn a ton from them. If you just hop on a call, have a conversation, you will learn from them. Second, there's a hidden benefit of posting. Even if 100 people see it instead of 100,000, this holds you accountable to continue to build. You can't build in public if you're not building anything. So it's a great forcing function. And the third, if you don't have an audience and you don't want to build in public, there's an amazing thing that's called ads where you can pay for people to go and check out your website. If you have $100, you can probably get around 100 people to your website. The average cost per click across major platforms ranges from 75 cents to $2. On Twitter, it's 75 cents to $1.25, Instagram $1 to $1.50, YouTube $1.50 to $2. So you can get people there. Okay, so you've created a product, you've gotten eyeballs on it, and now it's time for the third strategy. Build fast and break things. This is a classic tech saying, but I think a lot of people don't really get it. So we're on the same page. Here's a video of Mark Zuckerberg talking about this way back when and how important it was for Facebook. What I really mean by move fast is that I want to empower people at the company to try things out. And I don't demand that every iteration of what we release is perfect. What I want to optimize for is um, learning the most and having the best products three, five, seven years from now. And Levels embodies this philosophy perfectly. Were there issues with his app when he launched it? Absolutely. Is it not a perfectly polished product? Yes. Even Levels will go on Twitter and reply to other people's products and be like, hey, this is better than mine. I need to change mine. But here's the more important part for all of this. Nobody cares about your product respectfully and nobody cares if there's a problem for example someone hacked levels crash messages threw a bunch of peach emojis on there somebody reported it and it was resolved he has thousands of users thousands of eyeballs and no one cares you resolve the issue you keep it moving so these problems shouldn't slow you down from releasing something into the wild so how can you build fast and break things i like to keep it very simple and this is pulled directly from jeff bezos he describes decisions as one or two way doors a one way door if you make a choice it's very hard to come back and revert that change if it's a two way door you can go in you can test it if it doesn't work you can come back anything that's a two way door should be decided on quickly don't overthink it just build and that's something Levels is great at that anyone can do. Ultimately, though, you have to decide what to build. And this is an art that Levels has absolutely mastered that not enough people are giving credit for. The fourth strategy that he does is he focuses on force multipliers. Force multipliers are simple. These are things that get you outsized returns compared to the effort you put in. 
This is just physics. The higher the force multiplier, the more you're able to accomplish. Let me give you an obvious example just to visualize this. There's three potential features that you could build. The first, a slightly prettier user interface on a part of the product that 2% of people see. The second is a new color scheme that only 1% of people want. And the third is a one-click payment process that doubles your conversion rate, which is the highest force multiplier for the product, probably the payment system. And now identifying these can be hard and they're not usually this obvious, which is why I use the value equation whenever I feel stuck, which was made popular by Alex Ramosi. Here you can see that value is a combination of four factors. At the top, you have the dream outcome or what will happen. You have the perceived likelihood of achievement, the chances this will happen. And below it, you have your time delay, how long it will take to happen, and the effort and sacrifice, which is how much work does it require to make it happen. Simply put, how amazing are the results and how little effort does it take? And the value equation is something that Levels is extremely mindful of, even if he doesn't mention it. In his eyes, time delay and effort and sacrifice is what separates his products from everyone else. He recently tweeted, most of my apps aren't super polished, but they get the user what they want fast. Fly game, open and write username and you're flying in seconds. Photo AI. Sign up and pay and your first AI photo ready in seconds. Nomads, show you best cities and data to move there in seconds. Many other slights apps I use, it takes ages to get value. He is focused on reducing the time and effort for users when using his product. And to him, this is a massive force multiplier. So let's just look at some of the features that he's recently shipped for this product. First, he's made it easier for customers to pay for advertisements, essentially reducing the time, delay, and effort for people that want to advertise with his product. The second is he introduced new plans as an in-game purchase. By selling these products, he's enhanced the dream outcome of the user, and he's created a streamlined approach to do it so they can get it quickly and easily easily. So these are what he's focusing on, but just as important is not what he's focusing on. One of the best things about Levels is he knows what he's good at and he sticks to it. The majority of the time he uses the same tools whenever he's building. Ultimately, people who use his products have no idea how he built it. They just use the product. So if you're building something and you have experience with Shopify and it can get the job done, use Shopify. Don't just learn WordPress for no reason. If the customer wouldn't know the difference, then it's probably not worth learning. Play to your strengths. And the last step is something that's absolutely critical that nobody talks about. You have to think outside the box to add value. I just discussed how Levels is increasing the value of his product itself, but he's doing one other thing that has really allowed him to skyrocket in monthly revenue, and nobody is talking about it. For this product, what is he ultimately selling? The majority of his revenue is coming from advertisement. People are buying eyeballs. So how could Levels improve this offer for people buying eyeballs? Well, Levels has made it so they're not just buying impressions inside the game. He made it so that they're also buying it outside the game. Since he's launched, he's continuously tweeted about sponsors of the product. And at this point, there's an implicit expectation that if you pay for an advertisement in game, you're going to get a tweet from Levels. Instantly, this means that you get hundreds of thousands of impressions from a tech forward crowd, which significantly sweetens the deal for anybody looking to pay for an ad. Now, I know what you're thinking. I don't have a massive following, so I can't do this to add value to my product. Maybe, but you have value in other ways. Let me walk you through two ways in the past that I've added value to a product in non-traditional ways. First, in my marketing agency, Agency, we were selling short form content. And what I offered clients was I'll pay for all of your filming equipment so you can get set up. This was a $200 or $300 investment, but was marginal compared to the lifetime value of this customer. A little bit outside the box, but it added value. Second, when I recently vibe coded a challenge called the 14 day challenge, I added on that if you won the 14 day challenge, I would hop on a call with you and give you a personalized audit on where you can save time in your day to day. That was easy for me to offer, but enhanced the value. You have value to provide. You can just get creative and Levels is a master at this. Now, in the word of Peter Levels, just getting people to make something is the first step. Even if it probably won't work out, they're now on the creative journey to make stuff. And if they keep going, many of them will end up very successful especially if they all go in their own niches. So here's my call to action. Take these five strategies, apply them to your next product, and start shipping. Because with AI, it has never been easier. Now, if you like this video, make sure to check out this video where I walk through strategies on how you can save 10 plus hours a week using AI so you can focus on what matters.